Let's get to work. Bebsy, Thursday nighter, Packers, Niners. Man, this look ahead was Packers a slight, tiny favorites. The opening line in some books was two and a half. The opening line in Bet365 was four because they're cautious. It's now moved to five and a half at most books, six at other books. And the big story right now is Packers and these COVID issues. We know that A.J. Dillon has come down with COVID. Before we break down the rest of this game, Bebsy, what have you heard about Packers and COVID? Well, so, yeah, A.J. Dillon tests positive, but then the rest of that uh, running back group is deemed uh, at risk because they've been too close to him. So even though they haven't yet tested positive, they're holding them out. Interesting. Interesting. 63 Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, 12 miles per hour is the wind. And just like in college football on Saturday, we have gorgeous weather starting tomorrow all across North America all week. So there's very little weather to be concerned about. Let's go. Uh, Christian Larson says a lot of Ravens just got placed on COVID. Yes. So those are the two things we need to figure out here is Packers and Ravens COVID issues. Other than that, I think this is a a really nice card to attack here. All right, Packers coming off 28-22 loss at home to the Vikings. It was Green Bay's first NFC North loss since LaFleur took over as coach last season. It was windy. With throwing difficult, the Vikings went to Dalvin Cook over and over and over again. The Packers filled the box and still couldn't stop him. What does that remind you of? NFC Championship when Mostert ran for 220 yards and Niners ran for 285 total. It's an issue that the Packers have. Cook ran 30 times for 163 yards, caught two passes for 63 yards, accounted for all four touchdowns. Packers had four scoreless trips to Vikings territory in the second half. Tight ends Tonian and Sternberger each was – Tonian goes five for 79. Sternberger goes three for 46. Devontae Adams catches seven passes for 53 yards. No other wideout had more than one reception. With Aaron Jones injured – Jamal Williams ran 60 times for 75 yards. Dylan, five times for 21 yards. But now they might all be injured. Or, sorry, out. Birdie says, I think this line is too high. I was all over the Packers, but now I think perhaps the Niners may be the play. Need to talk this one out. Let's move over to these Niners. Bebsy, your specialty is these Niners. And I know that this has probably been one of the most aggravating seasons ever. It's one thing when they're a shitty football team. And you expect them to lose, and they lose. It's another thing when, if you look at their roster to start the year, it's the best roster in the NFC. Injuries keep mounting for these Niners. 37-27 loss at Seattle. Niners lose Jimmy G for at least six weeks with a high ankle sprain. George Kittle for eight weeks with a broken bone in his foot. The Niners were held to 52 yards on 22 carries, 2.36 yards per carry, third lowest in four seasons under Shanahan. Tevin Coleman hurts his knee. Hasty becomes their main running back. He's 12 carries for 29 yards. Fourth quarter with Seahawks coasting. Mullins comes in and does what Mullins – he's so confusing, Bebsy, and you can probably enlighten us, but here he comes with nothing on the line and he looks – you know, like like Joe Montana, 18 of 25 for 238 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, those are – what it was the uh, the ninth most yards passing in the fourth quarter in the past 30 years. They did get Kwan Williams back. That was an enormous help. DK Metcalf shat all over Emmanuel Mosley. Niners already without their best two Ed rushers, rushers in Bosa and D Ford, their best cornerback in Richard Sherman, number one receiver in Debo Samuel, two key running backs in Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr. They lose Coleman to a knee injury, linebacker Demetrius Flanagan Foles to a hamstring injury, Dante Pettis to a shoulder injury, Tart groin injury, James ankle injury, Jordan Reed could come back. What a mess, Bebsy. Sorry I was talking for too long. Take it away. I know that you think, like Birdie, that this line might be moving to a spot where you might want to back the Niners. Yeah, I, I really think now that it's up to five and a half in some books, I, I really think you got to lean Niners in this just because of the way they have dominated the Packers uh, in recent years, really. They've, they've had the Packers' numbers when they're pretty close. Now, the Packers played really uninspiring football last week. They bounced back the last time they did that. And the Niners got nothing left. They have they, – they, the cupboard is bare. They have over $100 million on injured reserve right now. That is wild. I've never seen anything like it. However, Jamichael Hasey can still run the ball. Their offensive line is still 
relatively intact. They're missing their center. That's it. Uh, but they've been missing their starting center all year. They're now missing their backup starting center. Um, and Kittle is so important in the run game. I, I think that's what people forget about because of what he does in the passing game because he's such a monster there. He is huge for that running game. However, they still have Kyle Juszczyk. They still have Charlie Warner, who is just a, a, a run-blocking specialist. I think if Reed comes back, that obviously opens up the passing game a little bit because right now they got Brandon Ayuk and uh, they got Kendrick Bourne, who's is not really reliable. They cut Pettis actually today. Um, oh wow! Okay, but uh, yeah, I think there's value in betting the Niners at, at five and a half. At two and a half, you have to go Green Bay, but. Now that it's up to five and a half, I really think that uh, there is some value in betting the Niners. Let's, call, let's talk about a couple things here. We saw the Packers have to run the ball with 23 mile per hour wind, which kind of surprised me that Rodgers was still unable to do anything through the air and had to move the ball on the ground, and they couldn't do that. With the way the Niners are beaten up defensively, with backups in, I mean, who knows who's going to be running for them? Is Are the Niners susceptible on the ground with all the injuries they're facing? In fairness, the Niners' defense came out great against Seattle. They they started with three straight three and outs, and it was their offense that threw that game away. Uh, it, was, it was Jimmy Garoppolo throwing a terrible interception. They had almost fumbled the ball the way, uh, away on the play before, and that then and only then did the Steelers or the, the Seahawks get into that game and start rolling on offense. Defensively, despite losing Bosa and Ford has played like eight snaps this year, they actually still look pretty decent on defense. And their corners, Verrett, it mostly struggled a lot against Metcalf, but who hasn't? And uh, and to be honest with you, a few times he got the better of Metcalf. So it it's not so much – like their defense is still fighting. And they're still playing good, and their secondary is playing all right, even with the backups. And I feel like they could get a few more reinforcements for Thursday. Short week is tough for them, but I don't think it's a situation where Aaron Rodgers just carves them up, especially with the fact that they they do not have a running game right now. There's Who's going to run the ball for them? Let me ask the most important question, I think, in this game. What the hell is Nick Mullins? I don't get I, He's very, very confusing. And at times, he puts up stats that are you – know, he puts up Breeze and Brady in their early 30 numbers. And then he gets pulled and is not – Shanahan doesn't want to use him. I mean, uh, what are your expectations of Nick Mullins? Uh, my, my guess is as good as yours. The thing with Nick Mullins is he's not afraid. Uh, I feel like Jimmy Garoppolo, especially this year, has has thrown scared. But Nick Mullins attacks. Nick Mullins throws the ball. He tries to fit the ball into any window, and sometimes he's extremely successful. And one thing he does do well is he gets the ball into the hands of the playmakers, which I think uh, is one of Jimmy's biggest flaws. But the – you know – Interceptions that he threw against Philadelphia were absolutely atrocious. However, Philadelphia's pass rush was screaming down his throat in that game. So, I don't know. It's a tough call. And uh, I did notice in the chat that uh, that Dan Panko said, uh, uh, 49ers have all their best players. Uh, you should bet them they have value. I think he's, he's paraphrasing what I'm saying and then said, come on, dude. Uh, the point is, even with all their best players out, they still move the ball. Uh, they still have some talent. And Green Bay's missing a lot, too. And Green Bay, look, they played terrible this week. They did. They did. Their defense couldn't stop the run. You've not made a bet on a Thursday night all season. Are you thinking of making a move here on the Niners? Some books have moved it to six. I'm thinking about it. I just feel like I need to be honest with myself and continue to not bet Thursday night football in protest. 
I hate Thursday night football. I want it to go away. It's probably not going to go away. But I do really feel like there is some value in, especially if this line keeps moving up, the Niners are more than capable of keeping it close because Shanahan does have an excellent run game, even with they've got a, a, an undrafted rookie free agent running the ball, and the dude looks great. He's probably going to get hurt. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. There's no move for me here. I, there's a lot of moving parts in this game, especially now – that the Packers may or may not have a run game. This total opened up at 52. It's moved down to 50. There's 49 and a half. There's a 50 and a half. The leading indicator books have moved it down to 49 and a half. Do you, I know there's so many moving parts here, and we're shooting this Tuesday night. It's 8, 18 p.m. Eastern. But do you have a feel on this total at all? Uh, sorry. What did uh... – where, what was that total sitting at? I it opened at 52. It's now at uh, 49. My, my man, or 49 and a half to 50 and a half. Birdie's saying, where's the money going? Uh, let's take a look at the money. At this point, at this point, it's, it's. I mean, this is what's so good. It's all on the Packers. Uh, the cash at this point, they're saying is over 90%. Tickets just under 90% on the Packers. And – that does make sense because the money that would have come in on Sunday night and Monday morning would have been all people trying to get ahead of this market move before the COVID issues came in. And then the, so it's ridiculously high on the Packers. And then the total is uh, 60% cash on the over 57% tickets on the over and it's dropping. What do you think about this total Bebsy? I mean, if anything, I, I see this game I, – I don't see it becoming a shootout. I see this being a slog, if anything. Both teams uh, – well, you know what? Even as I'm saying that, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the, the, the running game isn't going to exist for the Packers. As of right now, like it's – you know, they might have to sit there in five wide sets all day. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. This is a weird one. I, I don't think I've ever seen a team as injured as the 49ers are – and I've never seen uh, one day wipe out the entire backfield of a, the other team. So this is a weird one. I, I really, uh, I really have no idea what the play is here. Uh, but again, the Niners in recent years have really dominated the pack. I mean, they embarrassed them in two games last year. And uh, and look, they really seem to have Matt Lafleur's number. He just comes out and nothing works. So. As, as ridiculous as it sounds, with all these injuries, I still lean Niners in this one. Well, not have the time to cover. You have time to see where this line goes. One thing I do want to add, that in these times of COVID, there are things that we need to take in as cappers that we haven't, been, haven't had, the, had to worry about before. But let's not let it overwhelm us because – COVID in the NBA bubble made everything so incredibly easy. And obviously, NFL is different. They're traveling from city to city. But let's not let COVID scare us completely off games. And let's let COVID do whatever it does for us to find angles to succeed with. Again, NBA in the COVID with no travel and, and none of those issues and them, the guys not going out partying or anything was as easy as the NBA will ever get. And I know this is very different. It's probably a bad Example, Green Bay Packers, San Francisco 49ers. If I gave you a free play, I'm sure at this point it would be on the Niners plus six. If I gave you a free play on the total, if I give you $500, bet it on the total, Packers, Niners at 50, what would it be? I think I got to go over just, just because I feel like this ends up being an air game. I think that's a good point because – the Packers know that they're so susceptible on the run that they have to fill the box all the time. And we just saw what happened when Hasty, if there's anybody in the box, he, he carried 12 times to 29 yards. You know, I, I think that that over is, especially if the Packers don't have a running game. If, 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 the, COVID, if the COVID cuts out the Packers running backs, then this game is definitely going over. 
Is, I mean, is that is that is that a parallel that's just too harsh or too extreme? Again, it's Thursday night football. We've seen how sloppy Thursday night games are. That's you know that's what pulls me back towards the under. Ziggy balls in our chat. Ziggy, we've missed you, my man. Ziggy wanted to take a little break from capping. Said he wasn't enjoying it. About I don't, what was it, Ziggy? Seven, eight months back. Nice to see you back in action. Ziggy balls back in action, baby. <laughs> 